Good evening. My name is Valerie Crow. I live in Temperance, Michigan. I'm between Davis Bessey and Fermi too. We wouldn't even be having this discussion tonight. In our American Indian ways, we are taught that any important decision affecting community must take into consideration how it will impact the next seven generations coming behind us. It's our responsibility to protect the earth, and we take that responsibility very seriously. Obviously, that consideration was not taken, or we wouldn't be here tonight, because we would never have started nuclear energy projects in the first place. And until the subject, and until the subject, until the subject of waste and safety were satisfied, Consequently, nuclear waste is now going to be impacting many more than those seven generations. Given that some components of nuclear waste will remain dangerously radioactive for tens of thousands of years in the future. I've heard some people talking about the need for more power, but I have yet to hear one person talk about conservation. I lived in Port Clinton when Davis Bessie was being built, and I knew engineers and laborers who worked during the construction phase and the startup. I'm intimately aware of the ongoing problems of Davis Bessie, beginning when the reactor was started up initially, and it did not go as expected, right through to include what to do with the nuclear waste that's been generated all these years. We were assured that we'd have a national repository for all this nuclear waste when the plant was being planned. These promises have turned into lies. We are no closer to finding somewhere to put all this radioactive waste than we ever have been. The solution seems to be strong, storing it right where it is, and that option certainly isn't without a whole new set of problems, especially when the casts were substandard, as some at Davis Bessie, as one at Davis Bessie was, and it was only one of 13 other plants that had dry cast issues. And storage on site is not a solution. It's kicking a very dangerous can down the road. My objection is the same now as it was back in the early 70s. What are you gonna do with the nuclear waste? How ironic that 71 years ago today, Enrico Fermi split the atom creating the first nuclear waste. No waste has moved anywhere for those 71 years, yet you want we citizens to believe that something is now magically changing and we should keep going along the same path we've been on for 71 years? Ridiculous. I give the NRC a no real confidence vote and demand that no new or extended licensing be granted, which seems to be the very same findings <coughs> we've had. The NRC has an obligation to citizens first and not the nuclear industry. When you don't know what to do with the, with the waste, stop making more. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Dan Myers. Maybe we all remember Fukushima, Three Mile Island, and Chernobyl. According to the Union of Concerned Scientists, there are continuing safety concerns, including where to store nuclear waste. In the absence of an interim or permanent repository for spent nuclear fuel, which remains dangerously radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years, plant owner owners keep it on site, mostly in overcrowded, relatively unprotected cooling pools. Nearly 75% of all spent nuclear fuel sits in these pools. About 120 million United States citizens live within 50 miles of a nuclear plant and continue to be at risk. And we are among them here. And more owners of aging plants just may decide that these stations aren't worth continuing to operate. The 
2005 Energy Policy Act provided a whopping $18.5 billion in loan guarantees to the nuclear industry. But perhaps we should consider Germany an economic powerhouse. Haven't they decided that the prudent way to get energy is to stop using nuclear and instead support the use of solar and wind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I live in Sinclair Shores, Michigan. There is no basis in science, engineering, the behavior of the nuclear industry and the NRC for confidence that high-level radioactive withdrawn fuel rods can or will be managed with no risk to the biosphere for as long as the radioactivity lasts. For the NRC and the nuclear industry to assert probabilistic assessments of what will happen to radioactive material over 240,000 to a billion years is a fraud and a conveyance. There is a consensus between the U.S. government and the nuclear industry for about 70 years now that withdrawn fuel rods are lethal unless shielded. To continue to produce them and intend to abandon them into the biosphere is profoundly immoral and a burden and a curse on future generations into eternity. It is premeditated murder. 75% of spent fuel is in fuel pools and allowed to remain there for as much as 60 years, often in overcrowded pools. The GEIS underestimates the risk of fuel pool fires and ignores safer alternatives of hardened on-site storage at the plant sites. Dry cast storage at Daiichi survived the number nine earthquake much better than reactors there in the fuel pool. The NRC assumes that surrounding populations will be eva successfully evacuated in the event of a fuel pool fire. After the Daiichi explosions, the U.S. advised any Americans within 50 miles to leave. The head of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission warned that if cooling pool number four collapsed, that risk continues today. The, an evacuation of 10 million people within 250 kilometers might be required. If that were undertaken in Japan or similarly at Indian Point in New York or at Fermi 2 or at uh, Davis Bessey or anywhere in the U.S., it would be impossible to achieve in a necessarily timely manner. Furthermore, we would need an evacuation plan with routes, destinations, immediate notification, uh, long-term housing facilities, competent medical care for radiation exposures, funding for large displaced populations, and full disclosure of the real-time radioactive release measurements. None of that is or has ever been available in the U.S. The de facto plan of the nuclear industry and the NRC for the public is shelter in place and suck it up. has an overcrowded fuel pool, it is at risk for weather-related events, loss of coolant, or terrorist attack. An accounting of public costs of reactors from uranium mining through shielding and monitoring of nuclear waste forever has not been done and must be included in the generic EIS. That will demonstrate that the better alternative, energy efficiency, conservation, when slower than I do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Greenwood. I'd express my thanks for this public plat uh, platform to speak my concerns. I've reviewed the, the GIS and the proposed rulemaking, and I want to voice my support. However, I do have certain concerns that I'd like to raise, especially in, in light of your issues. First, with issue one, I think it's important to maintain discussion of timeline for repository. I see that as a contract that we initiated with the nuclear industry, and it should be repeated throughout. Uh, issue two, safety, uh, safety and continued spent fuel storage should be made in the rule text. I also support this. I believe it should be within the text. Again, to 
well, get people that are opposed to our industry basis to make, make opposition. Issue three, uh, streamline the federal register. I am in high support of that because I search the federal register quite often and when you, when you dump extra explanation into it, it makes it a burden to search. Uh, and further support of this rulemaking. I believe firmly in the nuclear industry because I, I see life within infrastructure. And it's key to our infrastructure to maintain integrity of our electrical grid. I've traveled abroad and seen places without that infrastructure, the havoc, the desolation, and the poor living standards that are there. Our country is rich. We want to maintain this tradition. If we want to support our education, if we want to support the ongoing of our future, we need to maintain critical infrastructure, which is the electric grid. Thank you. I was 18 years old. I took the family car for my first solo trip. I went to the Rochester Institute of Technology where there was a symposium on nuclear energy. There was a pro-nuke person and an environmentalist, an anti-nuke person. They were having a debate. At one point, the, the environmentalist brought up the problem of nuclear waste. The pro-nuke position, the, the man up there got up there on the stage and he said, we have a solution now for the nuclear waste. And then the environmentalist said, well, what is it? He said, I can't tell you right now, <laughs> but we have one. <laughs> and at 18, I felt compelled to stand up and say, it's obvious he's lying. The whole industry is built on a lie. And the fundamental lie is that you know what you're doing. The official story is wrong very often. Time and time again. For example, here at Davis Bessie, we have cracks in our containment dome. The official story is those were caused by the blizzard of 77, yet, and that they fixed them now, they haven't gotten any bigger, yet the last time they looked, the cracks grew. This means that the cause was not the blizzard of 77, and that their, their solution is inadequate and wrong. So the official story was wrong. We were also officially told for decades, we've been told that a meltdown is impossible. And yet, we all saw that happen. We were also told that a nuclear power plant can't blow up like, a, like an atomic bomb. But the whole world saw the mushroom cloud over Fukushima. And here is my explanation for that. And I'm sorry I have to go quickly because I only have three minutes. But plutonium and uranium are often soluble in water that has oxygen. However, if you remove the oxygen, the plutonium and the uranium precipitate out. This forms a layer of reactive substance on the bottom of your container. This is what I believe happened in the reactor that had the mushroom cloud over it, as opposed to the hydrogen explosions. So this plutonium and uranium built up on the bottom and they were held in pressure by the containment dome and they started reacting nuclearly and there was an atomic explosion. Uh, this is also supported by the, the uh, water tanks in uh, Fukushima right now. They had water tanks where they put water in, they knew it was contaminated, they were monitoring the radiation and suddenly one of the tanks, or many of the tanks, there were radiation spikes. Well, how is this possible? They didn't put more radioactive water in. How did it get more radioactive? Well, again, if you set a container and let the, set it for a long time of water, the oxygen bubbles out, it becomes anoxic. At that point, the plutonium and the uranium precipitate, can precipitate out and cause a nuclear reaction on the bottom of the container, which can melt the container and cause radiation spikes which is maybe what's happening in Fukushima. Is it what's happening in Fukushima? Is that what caused the, the mushroom cloud? You don't know. You don't know if I'm wrong. You don't know what you're doing. The only thing we can do at this point is to repurpose the NRC. I heard at the beginning Keith said that this is only a small part of the relicensing and the regulatory proceedings of the NRC. This should be the main purpose of the NRC, protecting us from this radioactive waste and protecting our future generations. And please, repurpose yourselves. It would be a boon to mankind if that became the main mission of the NRC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Bob Parker from Cleveland, Ohio. Everyone is familiar with the seven wonders of the ancient world. 
Six no longer survive. Only the pyramids are still standing, but they have been dealing with problems from erosion, even though they have been in a mostly dry environment over their four to 5,000 year existence. Now, we as a society are talking about constructing facilities that must last 50 times as long, a minimum of 240,000 years, that's 10 plutonium half-lives, probably longer to contain plutonium, one of the most poisonous substances on Earth. We cannot afford errors, even minor errors, if future generations are to live normal lives as we have. We must be absolutely sure that such waste containment will succeed. Here are a few questions that I have. What evidence do we have that waste containment structures will survive for 50 times as long as the longest surviving structures, especially when they are continuously bombarded by radiation and extreme heat? How can we be sure that for the next 7,000 generations that people will at all times be able to maintain waste storage casts as needed? With climate change and geological changes over this period, will there be geological changes that we cannot foresee now that will affect the integrity of waste containment or geological repositories? Nuclear waste can be reprocessed into nuclear weapons or into dirty bombs used by terrorists. How can we guarantee that these facilities will be continuously guarded for 7,000 generations? What is the cost of constructing nuclear waste facilities and maintaining them for 200,000 plus years? Are these costs included in the calculation of today's <laughs> nuclear energy? In the 1950s, the nuclear energy promoted nuclear power as too cheap to meter meaning atomic energy was so cheap that there would be only installation costs, not usage fees. This turned out to be far from the truth. Today we cannot accept the proclamations of safe nuclear disposal by proponents of nuclear power who have a vested interest in the construction of more nuclear plants. Already at the Hanford Reservation, radioactive waste containers are leaking after only 70 years or less. Of course there have been fixes. But will they last 200,000 years? There are alternative methods to produce non-greenhouse emitting energy that are already being developed now. Remember, first do no harm. Do not continue to produce more nuclear waste hoping for a solution. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission should not assume that proper nuclear waste facilities will be developed. Instead, you should stop the construction of new nuclear plants unless and until we have a fail-safe containment system. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank, thank the NRC and everyone in attendance this evening. Regardless of people's viewpoint, I think it's important that they uh, voice their concerns to the government. Uh, good evening. My name is Rob Dorns. I'm the legal counsel for the Affiliated Construction Trades Foundation of Ohio. Act Ohio is a 501c5 organization created to encourage economic and industrial development opportunities and to facilitate utilization of industry best practices for Ohio's public and private sector construction industries. Our members make up the organized skilled construction trades industry. The NRC has asked for public comment on the proposed waste confidence rule. Act Ohio is in full support of a waste confidence rule which provides a generic analysis of environmental impacts of the continued storage of spent nuclear fuel beyond the life of the license of the operation of the nuclear reactor. The adoption of such a rule would provide the nuclear industry with a long-term stability and allow it to make capital improvements to its facilities, which helps lead to increased work opportunities for the skilled construction trade industry and the safety of our local communities. The two types of storage facilities for spent nuclear fuel have been designed to withstand natural disasters and terrorist attacks. Both fuel, both fuel pools and dry storage systems have never allowed the release of radioactive material. Act Ohio also supports the inclusion of specific policy statement regarding the safety of these storage methods. Additionally, Act Ohio supports streamlining the statement of considerations by removing the content repeated in the generic environmental impact statement, which will provide additional clarity to the nuclear industry and the public on the proposed rule. 
The adoption of a waste confidence rule will, will allow the NRC to operate more efficiently. Uh, efficiently. Both fuel pools and dry storage systems have repeatedly been shown to have no impact on the local environment. Thus, it makes little sense to delay licensing or renewal of licensing of nuclear facilities by requiring environmental impact statements for every plant storage facility. Nuclear facilities have already been required during, during licensing renewals to have stringent, stringent storage standards and management programs in place to ensure adequate inspection and maintenance of these systems. These requirements ensure that any issue which could have uh, safety ramifications are detected and helps keep our, our communities safe. In summation, Act of House supports the adoption of the Waste Confidence Rule, which provides the nuclear industry with long-term stability on this issue and help lead to work opportunities for the skilled construction trades industry. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Greg Pace. I come from Columbus. And one of the organizations that I'm involved with is called Radioactive Waste Alert. Uh, we're a grassroots organization who does not believe that any amount of radioactive contamination is safe for anybody. And our society, our society is moving in a dark direction. But rather than using our resources to make our mechanized industrial complex of energy and manufacturing safer for all of us, we are all following a path to the bottom. Profit and mediocrity take the place of common sense and safety for all of our lives. The easiest road seems to be to maintain status quo, even when common sense tells us that it will not lead to the best results in the long term. This road is supported and fed by those who are most vested in the shorter term outcomes without concern for the long term outcomes. The more difficult road is that which takes the most short-term resources to form because it looks at the long-term outcome and forms its basis therein. The easy road is the road to oblivion over time. We are now seeing the consequences of taking the easy road for generations and skyrocketing cancer and disease rates in our country, superstorms that are just beginning to reveal the onset of symptoms of climate change that scientific consensus is overwhelming that it is man-made, and investing our collective focus on economic profit motives over protection and safety considerations that result in all of the aforementioned consequences. It is time that our mode of corporate, legislative, regulatory, and social behavior and priorities, put priorities where we all know that they must preside, <coughs> safety of human life Safety of human social interaction next. Safety of human economics next. In other words, all the money in the world will not accommodate a wish for millions of unhealthy lives into healthy lives. The direction the NRC is taking with low-balling regulatory considerations for dealing with high-level radioactive waste is shamefully remiss in terms of priority number one. Nuclear energy is not a viable option to continue to supply our vast energy needs in today's civilization because we cannot do it safely. This organization who I represent is now in an effort to stop what is considered to be low-level radioactive waste to be ignored through recent regulation in Ohio that has deregulated shale waste streams from T-norm to norm, invisible basically, and is allowing it to be dumped in open landfills in the state of Ohio. This issue is dwarfed by the issue we're here for tonight. The issue of high level radioactivity, radioactive waste. So dangerous that we cannot even figure out how to dispose of what place it has in our society. We can't even dispose of it, we can't figure it out. If we reach into our hearts, transcendent to the place where we have created vested interests in maintaining status quo in this issue, we all can see that there really there is no place for more radioactive waste in our society where human safety is the number one priority. Therefore, we must focus our energy and efforts on shutting down the nuclear power industry and putting resources we have been using to support this industry into fully renewable energy methodologies now. Germany is doing it, Denmark is doing it, as are other countries. 
The dinosaurs were killed off by an outside force. We do not want to become the dinosaurs who killed themselves off. Thank you very much. Thank you.